Hello, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be building this. Um, uh, this. Eh, that isn't working out right. Let's try something different. There we go. That's much better. Now, this is the Object 279. A crazy tank from the Cold War with a lot of crazy features that are going to be really interesting to build, like those quad tracks. Get into that more later. And you can see, really cool looking tank. If you want my full opinions on this kit without watching the whole build video, go to the time on screen right now, and that'll be my summary. But before you do that, one big thing you need to know, with those four tracks, they are all individual links, as you can see here. Because there's four tracks, there is a lot of them. And I mean a lot. And they're not articulated, so they're a bit of a pain to build. We'll get into that later, though. Starting into the main build, though, we have these big pontoon pieces that go underneath the tank and hold those big four tracks. These were originally designed to hold those four tracks because you can't use a conventional hull, as well as apparently it was supposed to help the tank float a bit better in swampy areas. Don't know how well that would have worked, but eh, it was worth a try for them. For actually building it though, we're just gonna be cutting off the sprue bits, gonna cutting it down, and then, of course, assembling the two sections together. They fit together pretty well. Shouldn't need any filler, really. But they went together all right. And, of course, just adding glue. Then it's on to the little suspension components, getting them glued in. Now, you can see this kit actually has two little holes for those suspension components. That's because this kit has multiple variants. One for the displayed one in the current Soviet museum, or the active one. I'll be building the active one, so I put them in the lower spots with the suspension extended. Now it's just filing down the components where those wheels are going to go. The I guess these would be the tensioning wheels because they're higher up. And then getting them on, putting them in right. After that, we'll be doing the normal road wheels. And these were pretty good. They only have two sprue components. Easy enough to sand down and put on pretty well. And you can see there, now I'm just putting some glue on the internal peg and putting them on. And this kit's pretty good for this part. These two parts can be assembled independently from the hull, which makes it pretty nice and easy to do, and put them all together. The road wheels all go on nice, and they look decently well. They're a little bit of a different design of road wheel, because they don't have separate holes in them or anything, so they just kind of are blank bars with some detail on them. But now we can put on these idler wheels doing the same process as those road wheels. Then it's on to sanding down and cleaning up the tops and bottoms of these pontoon pieces. And you may think that this would be easier with all the suspension components off and that I probably should have done that. And you'd be right, but I completely forgot to do that. So here we are. But it wasn't too hard with those suspension components on. Just sanding them down. I don't think this will need any filler to fill in any gaps. If it was going to be a major display piece on the model, then I would. But since it's going to be underneath and probably covered in mud, I'm not going to bother with it. But now just test fitting them up onto the underside of the hull. I'm not going to glue them on just yet because putting those tracks on, you're going to want to be able to take them on and off. And it'll probably make it easier for painting. After those are all done, we're now on to the actual hull components starting off with a few little details on the underside of the hull, like these little tow racks and tow pieces, just using more cement and tweezers to get them on right. Then we're on to drilling the holes with this kit. Now this kit tells you to drill these holes for mounting some tools, and we'll get back to that because I don't think these holes are really necessary, and they could actually cause a bit of a detriment to the kit itself. It's kind of a weird thing, and it's basically the first problem I have with this kit. But after that kind of weird fiasco, we're on to just mounting some more details on top of the hull, getting those little things on. And here we have one of the biggest problems with this kit, in my opinion. This photo etch. I've dealt with a fair bit of photo etch before, but this was very flimsy. It seems like it's thinner or a worse grade of material than any other photo etch I've ever used, and it caused it to just be very bendy and very flexible. You can see here on this vent I'm installing, it's very rippled, and that's just because taking it off of the sheet, it got rippled up and kind of bent up. But luckily, I think with weathering and kind of painting, 
we'll be able to make it look like that is kind of intentional. So it should be able to be worked out in the end. But moving on from those, we're on to the tools and the little pieces. Now here's where I say that those holes that the kit gets you to drill are kind of pointless because the tools don't really have pegs to go into them very well and they can kind of just leave a weird unwanted hole if the tool doesn't fit perfectly over it. So if I were building this kit again, I would probably not even drill those holes or at least test fit and see if you want them. Then one nice thing with the photo of this kit is it does include these little straps to go over the tools and cover them up. That's what I'm just doing here. Normal, standard, using super glue, and then bending it down with tweezers and a pick just to get it all nice and stuff. That's a nice thing with Photo Etch. You can bend it. This one is a little bit too bendy though, in my opinion. Then it's on to these little banister bar pieces. I'm not really sure what the purpose of these on the real tank are. This tank doesn't have a lot of information about it since it was kind of a secret project and there was only a few prototypes built. So, I'm not completely sure what these parts are for. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me. If you know, definitely tell me what those bars are, because I would like to know. Then it's on to this, which I believe is a crowbar piece, and it's the same thing again. There's holes you're supposed to drill for it, but the way that the piece goes on, it doesn't even have a peg to really fit into that hole, so kind of pointless. Now, once all those details are done, we can glue the two halves of the hull together. Just lining some glue along it, and then fitting it up. And the hull fitment of this kit is pretty darn nice. I don't know if it'll need any filler. From what I've seen, I don't think it even will. Just a little bit of sanding, getting some right gluing on it, and it'll be really good and good to go. Then we're on to another final hull detail piece, which is these extra fuel tanks that go on the back. And you just assemble these with a few pieces, kind of gluing them together. They did require a fair bit of sanding to get them to fit nice together, as well as onto the hull itself. But they're not too bad. Just adding a little bit of extra glue to them here. That's pretty much good. Then they can actually go onto the tank itself. And these kind of just hang off the back in an interesting way. I put some glue on the insides. And then there's these little strap pieces that I just softened up with some glue and adjusted to fit just right nicely on there. So now they're softened up with glue. Going with a pick and just kind of maneuvering them and working with them just to make them look good. And with that, we're now on to the turret. And the turret starts out with this little commander's cupola piece that goes on top, and just adding that and starting to build it. Now starting to build that, there's a little bit more photo etch here. This is just a light hanger piece that holds on a search spotlight that goes onto the top of the commander's cupola. And this is a really nice little addition to the kit that a lot of other kits I've seen don't really have. And that's this commander's cupola is removable and rotates in the same way that the turret does. That's a little nice detail. Then we're on to the barrel of this kit. The barrel of this kit is really long. So the cannon that this tank in real life had was a very big, very powerful cannon that meant a long barrel. So this barrel goes together pretty nice. I had considered getting a turned metal one or maybe 3D printing one, but this one seems plenty nice. so. We'll end up using it. Might need to do some filler later on, but we'll see later. Then, once we've got that stuff kind of assembled, we can glue together the turret here. And the two turret halves go together pretty well. Those side pieces will need a bit of filler later on, but for now, we're just gonna build the kit as is. And with that, we're adding some more little sighting pieces and stuff to the top of this kit. The turret on this kit is pretty decent, goes together pretty well. Although there are some weird parts and problems that I'll talk about a little later. But for now, it's just more of the same, gluing together pieces, putting them all together. But then we're on to the other hatch of the tank. This hatch is kind of more of the same, except this one doesn't rotate, of course. And none of the hatches on this kit are designed to be opened or closed. So putting a fair bit of glue around it as well as doing glue afterwards just to make sure it really seals it up and there's no unwanted gaps or unsightly things that really just detract to a kit. Because when a, you have a kit where hatches are open or parts exposed like that, it really just doesn't look great. So after that, we're on to some of the last final details of this turret. It's not a very complex kit. There are a few small finicky pieces, but it all goes together pretty well. 
So now, talking about the final attributes of this kit and kind of summing up the build of it. It's a really nice kit. It has some really nice looks. The cast texture on the kit already is very nice. I didn't feel like I need to add it, but it has some problems like those photo etch parts, as well as the manual has some weird and confusing pieces. You can see here, you start with going to piece nine, then to part 10, which goes down and over, and then across to part 11. It really doesn't make much sense, as well as some of those photo etch parts have really no instructions on how to bend them, and some of them just not clear, as well as those parts aren't even labeled at all. They're really easy to miss. So this kit's quite good, but some parts of it really are lackluster. But that being said, it is the only 135th Object 279 kit that I've found, so you kind of have to live with it. But outside of that, like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have anything to comment on this video, and we'll see you in the next one where we're going to finish those crazy tracks of this kit, because they're a lot of work, and also do some 3D printed details, and maybe start the painting. We'll see. But, see you in the next one.